Yes, that's the first thing that engineers don't think about. Um, they think all about the scope and how the front end is, how low noise it is and so on, but rarely think about the probe itself. And unfortunately, the probe is your first contact to your signal. And it's how well you probe matters to what you see on your display. I think you have to decide what you want to measure. Is it a voltage? Is it a current? Or is it a, a, a logic signal, like just ones and zeros or so on? Depending on that, then you have a different range of probes that you can choose from. So if it's voltage, you have a simple passive probes that you can use that come standard with the scope. They're useful for, I would say, maybe 70% of applications, and they're readily available um, on every engineer's bench. Uh, but then you might have some exotic cases and so forth where you need uh, higher voltages. For example, like these ones here, you have a high voltage differential signal that you want to measure. So you have uh, dedicated probes, either high voltage or high frequency uh, voltage probes that you want to measure. We are going a little bit into the philosophy of metrology, right? <laughs> because right, whenever you probe something, you actually modify it, right? Uh, it doesn't really matter if, you, if your probe is gentle with the signal, doesn't load too much, it really depends on the context. You are anyway modifying the topology of your circuit because you're plugging something onto it. So you're not seeing what you would expect without a probe connected. That's the first thing to know, right? And engineers need always to remember that, uh, first of all. But then, of course, as you say, uh, the signal goes through a path and the path starts from the test point right so it goes through the probe it gets into the scope front end there is a signal path of uh, attenuators because you want to for instance match the the range that you're working there are amplifiers there are filters and then there is the digitizer right of course probes also uh, affect the noise the measurement uh Standard passive probes have an attenuator factor of 10 to 1 and that makes the noise of the uh, front end even more important because the noise of the front end goes in one to one while the signal which is measured with the probe goes only in with this attenuation factor. Because all the probes to touch into the, the device on a test, we have the capacitive or inductive effect effections uh, during the test. If you have a longer ground line, that means that we have a strong inductive effect. So we need to shorten the leads or the grounding leads to reduce the inductive in effective infections to optimize the signal integrities during the customer implement the signal test. One thing that we really advocate upon is reduce your ground loop. Um, so if you know your crocodile clips of your passive probes and your witch's hat of your passive probes and so on, try and avoid them if you really want to characterize the signal. It's a very important point to take care of the ground connection. If you, you use this uh, long wires with this uh, croco uh, connectors, you often couple a lot of uh, high frequency noise into your measurement by using uh, the ring loaded very short ground connections um, you can reduce the uh, uh, coupled noise high capacities uh, on the measurement um, impact the signal in that way that if they have uh, some kind of low pass filtering if you have a probe with a higher capacity you only see lower frequency signals while high frequency uh, peaks for example uh, didn't go into the measurement. They are filtered out and you'll see only the slower signals. So I think um, the main thing you want to reduce is the amount of loading that you might have on your system itself. So anything that you have an inductance line or the amount of capacitance that you add to the line itself has a tendency to bring the signals further down and so forth. We can use the higher impedance to catch up the signals more efficiently because it depends on the Kirchhoff's uh, separated the loading effect by the circuitry theories. If you have a higher impedance, you can retrieve a signal more efficiently by the oscilloscope. So it really depends then what you're trying to characterize. And this then means that if you want to characterize high frequency, 
you need the right probes as well because you want high impedance at the tip, but actually you want to characterize, you know, really high frequency, maybe one gig or two gigs and above. So then you would use um, active voltage probes. As active probes, um, you have a big advantage and the capacity, the input capacity is uh, much lower, usually below one picofarad and uh, this lets the noise go um, less affected uh, into the front end of the oscilloscope. Uh, so when you are using a passive probe with maybe 15 picofarad, which is a high load for high frequency signals. So I think passive probes, you can do something like 400 volts or something like this. But if you want to go even higher, like KV range or so on, um, then a passive probe is not really ideal because if you think about it, a passive probe is just a piece of wire with some resistance, some inductance and so on and things. The most simplest of electronics in there. Most of the other active probes, as I say, have more intelligence in them. So they have an amplifier, they have a front end themselves to help characterize that signal that you're actually doing. You have better impedance matching to go into the probes itself and not load your signal too much to actually get the signal in the end in the best way possible. When you come down to these really fast links, it's how you actually reliably probe them, not so much to affect the signal, and can you believe the signal that you're actually seeing on the screen. So um, for DDR especially, we have um, solder-in probes, so you can actually lift the chip up and then you get access to all the lines itself because DDR has a lot of different yeah, signals that you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> soldering in, having the connections as close as possible, minimizing any amount of those effects and things has a huge impact when we go into higher frequencies. Not so paramount when we think of low frequency, like 60 megahertz or so on, it does have an effect. So you see, you see it in passive probes as well. The more longer ground loops you make and so on, you see they're ringing. Traditionally, we can use the high voltage differential probe to equivalent to the isolated oscilloscope. But currently we can use the optical isolated probe to do the same thing as the high differential probe. So it is very important at the, this one optical isolated probe, we can have a higher dynamic range compared to the traditional high differential probe. Essentially, when you use a differential probe, you're actually also seeing the common mode element of it as well. So you're actually seeing both the plus and the minus, if, if you like, if you want to portray it that way. Um, and we're only caring about the differential signal. And because our switching frequencies has increased, the frequency content has also increased. So we want to be able to reject the common mode at those high frequencies. So this is our new um, isolated probe, so optically isolated probe. Uh, and this is mainly uh, required, as we see in power applications, when you have faster switching and so on, you might want to uh, think about how you avoid common mode and how you reject the common mode. And this is really where optical isolation helps, that we can actually reject the common mode at a really high frequency. So this is up to one gigahertz, if you like, of, of frequency range, and we can get a really high common mode rejection even at the one gig. Uh, area. Signal fidelity is where all engineers discuss about and uh, there is no unique way let's say to say yes this signal is a, a real representation of what I see because engineers must always know what they are doing. They must know if they are loading the circuit, they must know what, what are they using to connect to the test point because even a little hook, a tip that goes to the square pin may somehow modify the signal. It's anyway a filter. There is, a, there is some parasitics. There is a parasitic capacitances, inductances in anything you connect. 